In this video, we're going to continue our discussion um, about the operations of functions now and, and break away from uh, the arithmetic operations uh, and now focus in on composition of functions, um, which, again, is, is mostly notational, um, but it does also imply a certain order of operations. So we'll, we'll discuss that in the next example. Uh, but for composition of functions, um, if we have f circle g of x, the, uh, the circle here, that's going to uh, be the, the notation for composition. Um, that's going to mean the same thing as f of g of x. So it's almost as if we take function g and plug it inside function f to create a new function. Um, so looking at this first example down here, um, we're given two functions, two continuous functions. Uh, we're told to find f circle g of negative 1 which is the same thing as f of g of negative 1. So we'll go ahead and we'll start here with g of negative 1. So g of negative 1 means go find function g every place you see an x, put a negative 1. So we'll have a negative 1 squared minus a minus 1 plus 1, which gives us 3. So we've just determined that g of negative 1 is 3. So now I'm replacing g of negative 1 with 3, uh, which will be f of 3. So go find function f every place you see an x, put a 3, and we end up with a 0. OK, so similar to, to how we handled um, transitioning from continuous to discrete uh, with arithmetic of functions. Um, we're going to do the same thing now with uh, composition of functions. Uh, so from the previous example, uh, you can see there what I have in blue. Um, but there's a couple things to, to really pay close attention to. Um, first of all, you can see that we start with an x value here of negative 1. It maps to a y value of 3. Now to continue the problem, the y value becomes the x value for the next step, which then maps us to a y value. So in the last type of problem, we were looking for common x values. Here, we're not looking for common x values. Instead, we're looking for a common link. So a common link meaning that the y coordinate will become the x coordinate in the next step. Uh, so just looking for a common link here. So if we look at the example that we're given, uh, function f and g there in black, <clears throat> we, uh, we're going to figure out g circle f, which means we're going to need to start with f. <clears throat> so I'll start with f, and I can see that 1 maps to 2, and then as I transition to function g, my y becomes the x, which then maps to 6. So the first point, the first ordered pair of f, uh, sorry, g circle f would be the point 1, 6. Okay, now we'll just keep going. You can see that 2 would map to negative 3, but there's no negative 3's for the x coordinates in function g. Similarly, 4 maps to 5, but there's no 5 as an x-coordinate in G. Uh, but if we keep moving down the line, the x-coordinate of 3 maps to a y-coordinate of 0. And then here's our common link. The y becomes the x that maps to another y. So our second point would be the point 3, 2. Now... I'm going to give you guys a, a few minutes, go ahead and pause the video, um, and really work that next uh, you try example um, in, the, in your notes, because uh, I'm going to need to use that example to help clarify example six. Okay, so I went ahead and I copied down uh, the you try example, um, and what you see there in blue, uh, those are the answers. Um, so everything above that green line, uh, that's the you try. So hopefully those are the answers that you're coming up with for F circle G and G circle F by looking for that common link that we discussed. <clears throat> now, 
we're transitioning again um, from these discrete functions into these continuous functions. Um, and I really want to have a discussion here about domains. So in our example six, um, we're given f of x equals x squared and, and g of x equals the square root of x. Um, and then we're going to compose um, f circle g and g circle f. So uh, to get started, uh, this first of all, if you want to view it maybe in its alternate form, um, really just says to take function g uh, and plug it inside function f. So I'm going to plug it in right there. So I'm going to have the square root of x squared. Now, <clears throat> we'll get back to that in a second, but similarly in part b, now I'm going to take my f function and I'm going to plug it right inside function g, which would tell us to take uh, the square root of x squared. Now, when we simplify these, um, the, the, the square root and the squares, they, they certainly um, work against each other in a certain regard, uh, but we do need to be pretty careful here. Now, the f circle g, that is truly going to simplify to x. But the g circle f, that's actually going to simplify to the, the absolute value of x. Now, the reason why the previous example is so important is because if you look at functions f and g very carefully, function f in the u try example is the same function f as in our current example, and similar with g. And if you look at the results, they should also be the same. So, by looking at the g circle f right here, notice these points. Those are the points of the absolute value of x curve. Uh, all of the outputs are positive, um, but you can see you're able to plug positives or negatives in for x, which implies that the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. So back to part A, the domain here now, uh, we have to be a little bit careful on. As for the domain, notice how you only have positive numbers. Well, the domain of this would in fact be 0 to positive infinity. And, and again, there's a lot going on here. This is a very, very unique, uh, interesting example as to how essentially it looks like you have kind of the same thing going on, uh, but it's very clear uh, that you don't. You've got an, uh, just an x, you've got an absolute value of x, you have the domain being everything, and you have the domain being restricted to zero to positive infinity. Uh, so keep in mind uh, where things came from in order to help you out with these domains. Um, when you start here with function g, function g only allows you to use numbers that are zero and bigger. So when you take g and you plug it inside of f, again, you've been restricted from the start. So if you've been restricted from the start, you're going to be restricted until the end. On part b, when you start with f, f's domain is everything. So you're not restricted at all. And as you see, when you come down here now, you're still not restricted with the absolute value of x. So the, the inputs that you're allowed to put in here can be anything uh, from negative to positive infinity. So in this last example uh, that we'll take a look at, now it's our job um, to take a function uh, that has been created uh, clearly uh, by some composition um, and, and almost deconstruct or decompose uh, it into smaller functions uh, that in the, the, the correct order we're able to then recompose and create the, the function. So uh, depending on how you prefer to see the notation, um, this is a, of course the same thing as <clears throat> f of g of h of x. So our job is, to gonna, is going to be to find h, g, and f so that when I plug them into each other in the correct order, uh, I actually do end up with our resulting function. 
So um, what I see when I do this is that h of x, uh, kind of the most interior part of this, uh, could be the square root of x. I see that uh, g of x could be the x plus 1, uh, noting that if I were to take my h and plug it into my g, then I would be uh, on track to, to get what I'm, I'm hoping to. Um, and then finally, the last function f could be the x squared. So to kind of check this uh, in the correct order, I'll take this square root of x and plug it in there, which would give me my root x plus 1. And then I would take this root x plus 1 and plug it in for x, giving me the root x plus 1 squared uh, as desired. Uh, so the three functions that we needed to find, h, g, and f in that order, uh, would be the root x, x plus 1, and x squared.